Okay, in this video, we are going to look into building a little alarm circuit using the Raspberry Pi Pico, which you can see mounted on my breadboard. Now, when the alarm is triggered, you'll send an SMS text message to your smartphone indicating the alarm has been triggered. Now, we could have different trigger inputs. We could have fire detection. I have a flame detector on my board. Now, if I introduce a flame, you can see the LEDs on the bottom come on, indicating a flame detection. And that's sent to the Pico which will send out an SMS text message alarm. Okay, I also have an HC06 Bluetooth module mounted on my breadboard, which is connected to the Pico. And when alarm is triggered, the LED on my Pico will come on, and the HC06 Bluetooth module will send a message to my smartphone, which will be in the same vicinity within Bluetooth range, which will send out the SMS text message alarm. So I'll activate the alarm, and we'll see the text message being sent. So I'll introduce a flame. And there's my text message saying fire alarm tri tri tripped. Okay, the Arduino SMS app will only run on Android smartphones and it's not available through the Google Play Store. So look online and search for Arduino SMS for Android and there's a couple of websites and here's one here. Then just hit the download button and it will download it into your computer or into your, into your phone and just run it on your smartphone. Okay, I removed my flame sensor and I have a program running that's detecting temperature. So now when the temperature drops below zero degrees, it's going to send an alarm to my smartphone. So this is my frost detection. So I'm using the internal temperature sensor of the Pico and it's not that accurate. It's plus or minus 10 degrees accuracy. So I had to, I had to calibrate it myself. So now I have to, I have to pair my HC06 to my app so I'll pair it, and you'll see the LED stop, stop flashing when she's paired. So now she's paired. Now I can get out of the app. It's still running in the background. Now I'll get some cold spray, and I'll spray it on the chip. And there's our message temperature alarm tripped and it gives the temperature and it'll do this every 10 seconds and it'll update the temperature each time so you see the temperature is slowly warming up it's minus 4.88 okay next we are going to have a look at the hardware now the Pico board runs on 3.3 volts but there is a 5 volt output on this pin here it's labeled V bus it's actually connected directly to the USB connector so that 5 volts runs along and I'm powering my HC06 Bluetooth module with 5 volts. Now there's a 3.3 output right here and that's powering my flame detector. So now the flame detector and the HC06 and the Pico board, all the grounds are connected together and the output of the flame detector it's fed into GPIO2, pin 2 and UART0TX is connected into the RX pin of the HC06 Bluetooth module. So that's our hardware hookup. So next we're going to have a look at the software. Okay, here's the code running on the Pico for the flame detector. Now you can see we're importing machine and uTime. So machine for the GPIO pins and UART. And uTime for sleep, which is my delays. Now my LED is connected to pin 25. And I'm making that an output. So that's driving my LED on the board. So that will come on when the alarm is triggered. My UART, I'm using UART 0 and I'm configuring that for 9600 baud. Now my flame detector is connected to pin 2 GPIO and I'm making that an input. So here's our program running. So while flame equals 1, so while it's looking at the flame detector, so 1 equals no flame. So while there's no flame, it's going to continuously loop. It's going to turn off the LED then go back up and check the flame again. And that's going to stay in that loop until it becomes zero. Until flame becomes zero, that means flame has been detected. It's going to jump out of this loop and it's going to go into a while true loop. So this is an infinite loop. So it's going to turn on the LED saying there's, there's an alarm. Then it's going to print to the REPL, fire alarm tripped. And then the UART write. This, this is what we're going to write to the UART which is going to be sent through the HC06 Bluetooth module to our smartphone and that's going to activate the SMS alarm. So you have a 10-digit phone number, and then a forward slash, and then you can put in any text you want. So I put in here 
fire alarm tripped. And that's going to be sent every 15 seconds. Now we, you could change that to whatever time you want. Now this is going to run continuously. So you could either have it run continuously or you could have it say do it five or six times and then stop. It's up to you. So that's the code. And I'll run it. I'll actually inject a flame here. And you can see on the bottom there, fire alarm tripped. So alarm has been set. And every 15 seconds we're going to get that uh, fire alarm tripped text on the bottom. And that will that will uh, continuously run until we go out and we actually shut off the alarm. Or in your code, you can make it shut off automatically. Okay, here's the code running in the Pico for my temperature alarm, my frost detection. So if you look at the very top, we're importing machine and U-time. So machine for the GPIO pins and for the UART. And U-time is for sleep, which, are, which is our time delays. Now pin 25 is connected to the onboard LED on the Pico. And that comes on when the alarm is activated. And I'm making that pin an output. The UART, I'm using UART 0. And I'm configuring it for 9600 baud. Now the temperature sensor is internal to the Pico, to the microcontroller. It's actually a diode on the substrate. And we have a constant current flowing through it. And as the temperature changes, the voltage across it will change. And we can actually calculate the temperature using the analog to digital converter 4. The LED is turned off, so no alarm. Then it's going to read the temperature. And if the temperature is greater than zero, we're going to go into a while temperature greater than zero loop. So while the temperature is greater than zero, all this is going to loop. So every half a second, it's going to take its temperature and have a look at it. And if it's greater than zero, it will just keep on looping. But if it goes below zero, it's going to jump out of this loop. And it's going to go down to this while true loop. Now this is an infinite loop. So the first thing it does, it turns on the LED on board the Pico. That means the temperature has, has gone below zero and the alarm has tripped. And it's going to print temperature alarm tripped to the REPL. And it's going to take the temperature and it's going to do a UART write. And in here we have a 10 digit phone number. That's the phone number that we're going to send the SMS message to. So we, get, we have a 10 digit phone number, a forward slash, and then text temperature alarm tripped. And that's going to be sent to the SMS text message along with the current temperature. And it's going to do that every 10 seconds. It's going to send out the alarm. Now you can make it so it only sends it out so many times and stops, or you could have it continuously run. So now if you look at the bottom, you see the REPL is looking at the temperatures. So if I spray some cold spray, and we could trigger it. So there's the temperature alarm tripped on the very bottom. So it's sending out the alarm, and it's going to do that every 10 seconds, or until we shut it off, or you shut it off in your code. Okay, so now you know how to build an SMS text message alarm using a Raspberry Pi Pico. Now this is a temporary solution because you have to leave a cell phone at the location to be monitored together with the circuitry here. Now there's a product out, it's made by MicroHard. It's basically a cell phone in a box with a serial connection, a serial port. And it has antenna connectors and a power supply. And you could do the same sort of thing and it would be more of a permanent solution. Now I also made a video on how you could do this with an Arduino Nano, how you could generate an SMS text message alarm. And I programmed the code in fourth, and here's an example of the coding in fourth, it's a lot more compact. So I'll put a link in the description box on my uh, video on how to do it with a Nano. And if you want to buy uh, that product from MicroHard, I'll also put a link there too.